right youtube says i'm live so um yeah um as i think we did the last time um if there's anything wrong just let me know if you can't hear anything or something's up um yeah please just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down or whatever and then i know uh, something's going on so um I've been holding off on doing this stream for a little while. Uh, people have asked me to do a 2.8 stream a couple times. And now that we have a beta, I think we're in a good place to actually start um, talking about it a little bit and seeing uh, some of the stuff that I'm excited about and maybe open up a couple things that I've made. Um, although I haven't used it that much yet, I've used it, I've played around with it enough to, uh, to I think, uh, know what was going on. So first thing we're gonna do is download uh, the latest version and I'm gonna throw out the one I have here. Let's hope that pops up. Come on, should have downloaded this before. All right, thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Cool. So, Let's grab the files, come on. I should really automate this. It always takes a little while. Oh, hey man, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, let's see, so I've got 2.8 set and let's start it now i have some uh preferences and things set so something that i've been doing a lot which i would uh actually no which i would encourage people to do is every now and then load the factory settings um this doesn't get mentioned a lot i find in in some streams uh, or some i guess documentation or whatever but especially with things still changing um definitely uh just reset stuff it's incredibly important. Um, I don't know. Things change, you know, they're, they're changing internal stuff in Blender and maybe some preference uh, can cause issues. I found that uh, very early on with the alpha, I had some crashing sometimes and resetting everything definitely helped with the stability. So that's so why I'm doing that. Uh, so let's see. And I thought it might be interesting to just kind of go over, oh, didn't actually reset everything, I think. Let's see factory settings and I'm going to save this startup file I always forget I have to click twice there we go and maybe um, start sort of, sort of going over some of the preferences that I use um, or that I changed from scratch because I think it might be an interesting way of uh, talking about some of the new stuff so I'm just gonna go in very quickly um, so rotate around selection is a really important one Let's see. So this stuff, um, well, it's really good for new users. I really don't like it. And you can disable it from here. And then you just get the simple access. I think it used to be down here in 2.79. It's up here in, uh, in 2.8. Um, 2.80, sorry. Uh, so that's fine. No big deal. Um, so rotate around selection. It's very basic. But you actually just, if your camera's moved, all it is is that you rotate around uh, the selected object. Simple things like that that really uh, make a big difference. So. Then uh, smooth view is something I set to zero as well. So basically, let me set it 200 first and move this out of the way for a sec. So if you're going into um, your different views on the numpad, uh, I like to set this to zero. And uh, auto perspective is on by default, which is great because it means, uh, let's see, uh, you'll be in perspective mode when you're just orbiting the camera around, but once you hit something, um, you'll see the animation is gone and it just goes into orthographic view, which is, I think, a very good improvement uh, for default. So um, I set that down to zero because I want it to be instant. I just want it to work a little bit quicker. And the other stuff so far, I don't really tweak the, I haven't tweaked the pie menus yet because um, I'm still getting used to them, but I'll up the size of the UI a little bit for the stream as well. Then, <laughs> Undo steps up to maximum every single time. Um, the more undo, the better. If you have a lot of RAM, it's a good idea to set them as high as possible, uh, in my opinion. Then I'm gonna open this up so we can actually read it a little bit better. Allow negative frames is something I always uh, turn on as well because it allows you to play from outside your frame range. And obviously it's not gonna work when I try to demo it. I don't know what's going on here, but 
Okay, that's weird. Interesting. Is it? Oh, it's right click. Is it set to left click by default? Ooh. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Um, cool. So let's see. Uh, setting the default keyframe interpolation, the linear, is an easy one as well. Um, I don't like it when I animate something that there's also already interpolation uh, on it. I like to set my keyframes first and then do the interpolation myself. So that's a really easy way. So you don't have to go in and throw it out. Um, just gonna look over it quickly. There might be some little things that I miss. Okay, so here we go. This is one of the big ones, I guess. Uh, select with left and right. I haven't really gotten used to left, so I'm gonna stick with right for now. Maybe in the future I'll switch to left. Um, seeing that it is the new default, it might be interesting for tutorials and things that I do learn to switch and actually go in there and do it. Um, now this one, the spacebar action, I've set it to search because um, while I like spacebar, uh, as I guess play and pause. The issue with it I find is shift spacebar becomes a duplicate of what's on the side here, which I really don't want. And um, right now setting it to search. Now shift spacebar is play and spacebar is actually a search, which is really nice. So that's something that I like and that I'm gonna stick with. Did I close them? There we go. Um, and as some of you might know, uh, I changed my 3D view stuff as well to something a bit more similar to uh, to 3ds Max, what I used to use before. But I like having pan view on just the middle mouse and rotate on alt middle mouse. Um, I'm sort of killing two birds with one stone with that and that the new thing with alt where you could like um, hit alt and then turn 90 degrees or go to the different views. I don't really like it that much and I prefer using the, uh, the stuff that I'm used to. Somebody's saying, <laughs> don't tell me you're a right clicker. Yeah, I am a right clicker. I got used to it quite quickly, actually, in Blender. I quite like it. Um, that being said, I don't really care either way. Um, I found uh, I've been teaching uh, some people as well, and left click is definitely a lot easier to get into at first. So we'll see. I might, uh, I might change it uh, down the line. So add-ons, there's only one that I really want, and that's the Node Wrangler. Uh, and maybe like point cache stuff. Um, I use point caches sometimes. Um, so I'll turn those on. Then the themes, I actually quite like the new uh, default theme. I think I might make a darker version at some point or if they have a, a darker one um, coming from the call for content. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see, I think it's nice. I think they did a really amazing job with the, the UI. Um, then this stuff I haven't really gotten into, um, you know, whatever. Lights, uh, CUDA, enable all the good stuff. Um, I'm gonna enable, disable the display for now in case we start rendering so nothing starts locking up or whatever. Um, then some of this other stuff, not really, I don't know, uh, it's all uh, sound related. I never really have any issues with it. Um, then this one is actually I've one I found uh, I've changed a lot is changing the selection method to OpenGL occlusion queries and turning on the OpenGL depth picking. For me, at least, I find that selection is a lot more uh, what I expect it to be. Um, I don't know why exactly. Um, I think it's just because it's using you know all the OpenGL uh, information that it has. But still, I do like uh, yeah setting this up like this. So um, I found that I don't know just selection just seems to work a little bit better. Then um, I've turned the viewport quality down. I don't know how much that it does right now. Um, I like to have my viewport as fast as possible generally um, just to kind of yeah keep everything running as quickly as I can. Um, while I like a lot of the new features, um, you want to keep it quick, especially with a lot of um, whatever, uh, what was I going to say, a lot of geometry and things. You don't want it to be constantly refining and, and busying up your, your GPU. Um, but this is just a very simple, you know, personal thing. So then I've started limiting the texture size in the viewport as well just to keep things quicker and uh, having the texture draw method method to GLSL um, I found that for 2d stuff it uh, or the images draw method it can be a little bit quicker because it's using the GPU um, and then memory cache limit I have 64 gigs of RAM so I'm setting it to 48 gigs um, so this is when you're editing uh, mainly or doing motion tracking or whatever. They've increased this. This used to be locked at about 32 gigs and now it's actually bigger. That's great because it starts caching stuff when you play it and it's actually a lot faster. So 
We'll save the user preferences for now, and I think that's most of it. Let's see if there's any questions yet. Um, so using auto tile size for 2.79, yes, I was. Um, it's pretty, pretty, it's a good add-on. It's awesome add-on, but for 2.8, uh, especially with cycles, um, a lot of stuff has been fixed. So you can render with small tile sizes, even on the GPU. And I found that like tile sizes of 32 by 32 to 64 by 64 uh, have generally been the fastest for me so far. Um, so yeah, that's a positive thing. So let's get into uh, some of this stuff. As you saw when I first started it, I've changed my UI quite a bit. Um, I don't know if I'll stick with it just yet, but um, I'll keep it default for now so it's easier for people to follow along. But I've been experimenting with hiding some stuff. Um, there's some things that I find a little weird um, where there's certain functions sort of double in the UI. Like for example, um, let's say we move this. Why this thing is in the viewport and not in here doesn't make much sense to me, but it is what it is. Um, uh, same with going into sculpt mode. Something that I do find weird is they do end up using this the active tool, but they kind of double everything up in here. So it's like, for me, it's like either make a choice, either use this thing full time or this thing full time, but having stuff in between feels a little bit off um, to me personally. Now I don't do that much sculpting, but I found it to be in different, uh, different, I don't know, different parts of the UI. Uh, kind of annoying sometimes. So generally I'll hide the top bar unless I really need it. You can really bring it back very easily just by going over to the side. And some other things that I'll do is, um, let's get out of sculpt mode real quick. Um, this is something that's irked me um, that I find really weird is in the default blender file, you've got like the X axis, which is actually the left axis pointing. Uh, more towards the camera. So what I'll do generally is I'll set it up like this where the Y axis is pointing backwards. So you know this is the front of your object. Um, it's little things like that. Um, it's just personal preferences. Now, something I throw out as well is this initial collection. You can basically have everything in a scene collection and then just have separate uh, collections for separate groups. Um, I like it this way. Uh, something that I've noticed as well, which is interesting, let's say I start making stuff and just going to start putting in uh, random things in here. Uh, oh. So let's say you have a collection and I'm going to move this. Uh, so I'm using the M key for that because control G is still a little funky right now as far as I know. Um, obviously they'll, they'll probably update it in the future. Uh, it's called it's test. So something very stupid that I've noticed is let's say we add cylinder into here. Now, this little gray bit that you can see is basically indicating, uh, as well as here in the viewport, which collection you're actually adding your, um, your new stuff to as well. So if this test one is actually active, and let's add in um, a torus, you'll see it actually pops into the torus. Um, and this is what I mean, like why isn't this in there? Again, it's a personal thing, but this is a lot of information to have in here, uh, obstructing the viewport. Um, personally, but hey, that's it. It is what it is. It's fine. It's no big deal. Um, so this is something to keep in mind. And it's a reason why I don't like the idea of having a scene collection and like a default collection in there, because I just want to work on my scene, put everything in my scene first, and then start dividing it up into collections once I have everything I need. So let's delete this and just keep the scene collection for now. There you go. I think another great improvement is that the default focal length of the camera is 50 millimeters instead of 35. This is really, really good. Um, I used to set it up even higher to 70. Um, it's a bit closer to what I was used to coming from other stuff. Um, but yeah, even the 50 is a big improvement um, to over 35 where everything seems sort of like fisheye all the time. And uh, especially when you're modeling stuff and just trying to get an idea of what's going on. Um, it's not always uh, not always good. So um, let's see. Somebody asks, I still haven't understood collections enough, at least in the context of replacing layers. All right, so before in 2.79, basically you had two ways of organizing things. You had groups and layers. And collections sort of takes care of both in one go. So collections are both groups and layers in, in the fact that they, they're, you know, throughout your entire scene, 
And um, the way you could do group instances before, uh, you can now do collection instances. So a great way of demonstrating this is let's make a cube and or let's make a plane and an icosphere. And I'm going to throw the icosphere in. See, I hit Control G, but the collection doesn't show up. So that's kind of an issue right now. So I'm going to hit M instead, add a new collection, and just call this 001, and hit OK. And then I'm going to have another mesh in here, just a cylinder. And I'm going to move that to collection. Oh. Zero two. Now let's see if we open these up, and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a collection instance of zero zero one. So moving this instance, um, it's really cool because group instances in two point seven nine, I feel like not a lot of people knew about them, and they're incredibly powerful, um, especially for some of the work that I do where I have to loop stuff. You can create a whole thing and then just put it in a collection, or it used to be a group, and then just instance that collection down the line, move the, uh, move the camera through it, and you get a perfect replica um, of everything, which is really awesome. So with this in mind, um, I've put in collection 001. So let's say we move the plane into collection 001. You'll see it actually propagates the collection instance as well. So this is the thing that I probably use the collections the most for is instancing stuff. So let's say um, with a more practical example, I'm going to throw out these collections real quick. Um, and let's just create some kind of tunnel thing. Oh, oh. And unfortunately, the, um, the what do you want to call it? Uh, display the key display isn't working yet in this so you're just gonna have to bear with me for now um, so let's just create something very simple uh, scale it up just a little bit on the axes here there we go and subdivide it down just a bit so we have something to work with so in my case what I'm, I was trying to explain and we're getting into beta territory here I'm gonna warn you now some of this stuff doesn't work completely yet um, I've submitted a couple of bug reports and uh, I'm sure it'll get fixed in the future, but there's some stuff that doesn't completely update and, and work properly yet. Um, one of those is displacement textures. So unless they've fixed it in the last 24 hours, there we go. They don't work yet. So you might notice I'm changing the texture and it's not updating. That's another one of the bugs that's still in here. So um, let's go up, but it seems they've... Uh, so this is like 2.5. And the main, the easiest fix for now is just going in and out of edit mode or just jiggling the modifier here. Um, it's not a big deal. I'm sure it'll get fixed pretty soon. But um, there we go. So let's say you make this thing and then um, I'm gonna duplicate this, scale it down a bit. I didn't get all of the uh, ooh, Y down. So now I've got a second one, and let's give that a different texture real quick. Mm, Voronoi, a bit more interesting. Push up the strength a little bit. And um, as before, like all the modifier stuff still works very well. So I'm, I'm happy that for the most part, um, a lot of this stuff has been taken care of. So and add in a wireframe and boost up the thickness there we go I'm not gonna get into how I'm making this but I'm just trying to illustrate a point so let's see I believe it's about 20 meters long so if we have a camera that's moving through here oops. nope wrong one there we go um, and I'm just gonna move it towards the end. And let's see, uh, actually I should have done it the other way around. And I'm still used to using this one, but I should start using this because you can really easily put in the uh, keyframes. So I'll see I've got 20 here and I'll set it to zero here. 
And now I'm just very slowly moving through this thing. Um, it's not really supposed to be, you know, a piece of art or whatever. But the cool thing is, if I now put these two cylinders in a collection, and I move them to uh, instance tunnel. There we go. Um, now all I can, all I have to do to make this loop perfectly um, is just put in this one here, move it by 20 units and now you'll see outside of the fact that you know there's a collection in the distance you might have to copy it a couple times uh, to make it work the cool thing is now i'm going from the first to the last frame and you can see it's a perfect sort of loop um the only thing i need to do to make it truly perfect is just move this keyframe one frame so it actually doesn't have a double frame in it so that makes sense so that's really, really nice, I find. Um, uh, you, you know, the same was possible with the group instance back in 2.79, but with the collections, uh, it just seems, it just feels a lot more uh, fleshed out. And the cool thing is, you know, if I'm gonna change any of this stuff, uh, let's say I change the texture on this one, to like five or whatever, and I go in and out, then you'll see the collection here updates as well. So that's some of the stuff that I'm, I'm really excited about. I've noticed there's still some funkiness with the collections. Um, the moment you start putting multiple ones in the scene and um, you can nest them as well. So you can have collections inside collections and you can go completely nuts, um, which is great. Because when you think about it, let's say you have an asset that you want to create, like a sci-fi asset or whatever, and you want different variations, then you can have a base collection that has all the different parts in it, and then you have separate collections with extra um, details in each one, all linked to one big collection. And then when you change the base, it changes for all of them. But when you change the different collections um, or the details, it will only change on the ones that you've used. So stuff like that is really, like, really amazing. Um, and it's funny because you could actually do all a lot of this stuff in 2.79, but with the collections, it's become a lot more clear to people. I think uh, what they're for. So that's some stuff that I really like. Um, um, let's see, what's the other thing that I'm really excited about? Well, Eevee, obviously, I think everybody is. So maybe it's uh, a good idea if I open some of the loops that I've been doing lately. Um, I'll start with the first one here. And let's see, because I've got some extra windows open here that I need to, uh, need to address, so. Go away top bar and shift F5. So you'll see exactly the same thing here. So this is a loop that I created recently. Um, let's see, and you can see I can work on it like this. So I have this on a second screen and I'm working on the loop. I'm working on the animation timing of the lights and stuff. And honestly, it's absolutely mind blowing to be able to work like this. It's really, really great. Um, I'm gonna try and not talk about Eevee the whole time because it's just gonna devolve into an Eevee stream, but there's so many good things about it. Um, yeah, I really enjoy it. And then when you pause it, it, uh, it actually spits out the full image. And um, then this one, it's really huge. So just to give you an idea of the speed. So uh, these are the frames that I'd been rendering. You know, it takes a little bit, uh, which is fine. We're talking 10 seconds for a full K, full 4K frame at, uh, at the right resolution. So this is really, really sick um, to be working on it like this. Yeah. For me, it's kind of a game changer. Um, also for teaching people, it's really amazing that I'm able to just kind of show people uh, work in Eevee, switch very quickly um, and that. Then another thing which I really like is seeing your overlays. So the reason everything is dark in here um, is because I've got, let's go back here, um, very little lights outside of this. Um, but the cool thing is with the overlays, you can actually see what's selected and you can work on it interactively in real time, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, because now I can start selecting the right objects in the thing um, and then, you know, work on all the shaders and stuff, which is really nice. So that's some of the things that I really like. Um, even better is that it works for cycles as well. So you can use cycles with overlays, which is just kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, so I've been putting that to good use as well. Now, let me think. Some of the other stuff, um, I'm trying to figure it out. Let's see if I can open some other, uh, some other ones. Like I said, I haven't used it for a lot of things. This is one I posted uh, last week, I think. Let's see, always the second screen that's opening. 
So this one takes a little bit of a while to open um, due to uh, a bug that I found in the subdivision surface, which I've bug reported as well at this point. So um, you can see just the sheer complexity. Um, there's a lot going on. These meshes are quite, uh, quite dense and it's taken a while, but that's okay. A lot going on. So there we go, and they're not even, uh, let's see, um, they're not even completely, what do you call it, subdivided. Um, so the final render subdivision is even a little bit higher than what you're seeing here. But again, all I need to do is just switch to EV, and then here we go. So the frame rate on this one is a little bit lower, but still you can get an idea of the speed and the general sort of um, things that are going on and everything that's working. It's just so much fun, absolutely crazy. So um, let's see if there's some questions in the meantime. Hardware, but somebody mentions the hardware. Yeah, so it's a Threadripper CPU, uh, 64 gigs of RAM and four NVIDIA cards. Um, but for EV, you can only use the display one right now. So, uh, you know, that's kind of funny because now I'm running into issues where um, one of the things that I liked about using XFCE, so Ubuntu with XFCE as a desktop, is I can render on my display GPU in cycles and it actually, um, everything else kept kind of going. So I could still watch YouTube and use my computer. But now with EV, with some of this stuff, um, it gets a lot heavier and uh, I'm actually now in a position where the desktop is starting to lock up a little bit when I'm rendering in EV. So that's funny to go back to that. Um, so hopefully in the future we'll be able to render it on different GPUs and we'll be able to specify them. I know that's, I don't know if that's something they want to do, but I know for this release they're just focusing on having it using the display GPU, um, which is fine. I mean, it's version 1.0 so even still it's just crazy you know um, to be able to do this um, so let's see if I can find some of the other ones that are fun uh, I can't remember what they were called I had a lot of EV tests let's see EV Ooh, I think I backed backed a lot of them up I can't remember what this is Oh yeah, these are these are pretty fun. So actually, that brings me to something else. Actually, go to a new um, new thing. Another thing which has been uh, greatly improved for two point eighty. Uh, I'm just gonna subdivide this a bunch of times. There we go. Um, is the cloth sim so? For now, if you're adding cloth, there's a new bending model called Angular. Um, so this resolves uh, collisions. There's been a lot of work done on collisions. There's been a lot of, um, let's see, uh, work done on just the, the model itself. And uh, I'll see if I can actually find that page. Oh, it's actually really interesting. Wiki. Here we go. So this is these were all the release notes for 2.8. Um, I would highly recommend going through it. The, just the amount of stuff that has been has been updated and changed and done is absolutely insane. Um, so let's see. I don't know where it is. Small improvements. Density graph. Add-ons. Cycles. Viewport. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's worth reading. Uh, I don't know where exactly everything is. More features, so physics, for example, here's the cloth stuff that I was talking about. So new new models being introduced, a lot of the work on collisions. Um, it seems a little bit faster as well. And um, yeah, definitely, definitely a cool improvement. So um, let's see. Um, see if there's any more questions. So volumetric on that, uh, don't know which one, yeah, I was a bit quick, but I'll talk about the EV volumetrics in just a second. Uh, will this be on YouTube afterwards? Yes, always. Um, they're just automatically archived by YouTube, which is awesome. But you're hyped for everything nodes? Yes and no. Um, there's some stuff that I would have liked to have seen changed in 2.80 um, when it comes to textures. 
like a unified texture system for the modifiers and cycles, um, which has po been postponed to, to, to everything nodes whenever that gets introduced. So right now everything still works the way it does before, which is fine, but I'm waiting for the texture system to basically be fully integrated. That's gonna be really cool. And other than that, everything nodes seem really cool. I think the first things they were gonna try and attempt to, to put in to that system were modifiers and uh, the texture stuff. I don't know if there's anything else, but like imagine being able to use modifiers with nodes it's gonna get very interesting very quickly. Um, just being able to like instance the same modifier and then maybe duplicate the mesh multiple times and then have other modifiers. It's gonna be very, very fun to use, I think. Um, so very, very cool. But we'll see, it's gonna take a while before it's, it's in there. Um, I'm very excited about 2.8 to begin with because of Eevee for the most part, because I tried using Unity on Unreal before. And while they're amazing tools, I was lacking the functionality of a 3D application. So one of the reasons I love Blender as much as I do is I can do everything in Blender. I don't have to leave it. I can do 90% of the work in here because um, I do 3D, all the rendering, all the compositing, and all, all my editing I basically do in Blender. And 2D stuff, it's either GIMP usually for simple things or Krita for some more advanced stuff if I need it. But other than that, it's almost all Blender. So that's really nice um, to have one tool. And then music obviously is a different application, but um, yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, cloth, um, I don't know how much I'll be able to do. Let's just run a quick force field and let it run while I talk about it. And maybe turn off gravity so it sort of stays in place. Ooh, there it is. And let's put in self collision. So this is actually something um, why the reason why I started putting my outliner and my uh, my properties on this side and completely over the vertical length of the monitor is with everything being single column now, there's a lot more vertical space being used and um, I like it when it's in here. So for example, if you just put them in here very quickly, you can see immediately um, it doesn't have to be all that wide because all of this stuff is in there, but you can see a lot more information in one go. And to me, it feels a bit more natural to have it over there. Um, but for now, we'll just keep it default. So let's see, change this turbulence real quick so we have something to look at while I'm, uh, while I'm talking. There we go. Um, so let's see. All of your node tree, show us the beacon opening animation file. Um, well, that was done in 2.79, so I don't really see the point in showing it. Um, the, the files are here, but it's basically, I don't know, I think I explained it a little bit last time. It's basically just one big particle simulation that I exported to an Alembic, and then I made a whole bunch of shots out of that really long uh, thing. So um, if you want more information about it, I suggest checking out the previous stream because uh, I go into detail a little bit more. Um, then let's see. Should we be able to go into light probes, reflection, radiance maps? Uh, maybe a little bit in just a second. I'm just going to leave. Doesn't DRI prime is one blender, for example, works for selection of the GPU that blender will use for EV? Maybe, but I haven't gotten into that stuff yet. Um, I'm waiting for everything to sort of be uh, to be a bit more final before I start looking into things um, to like hacking it a little bit. So um, then also a cycle is faster on 2.8 beta as I claim. I haven't tested it myself. Yes, it is not just a little bit faster, but quite a lot faster. Um, let's see if I can find a good test case for something uh, in cycles. Hmm. Maybe a benchmark might not be a bad idea. Then again, it might crash 2.8. Uh, let's see. I don't know have actually have anything on hand, but all I can tell you is um, since I've been using it, I've had old 2.79 stuff that I've opened in 2.8 that had, has rendered up to 150 to 200% faster, like almost twice the speed in some scenes. And on average, it's like 25 to 50% faster on a lot of scenes. One of my favorite things that has become, or it feels like it's become a lot faster, the work has been done to it, 
is um, volumes. So uh, volumetrics in cycles have become definitely uh, a lot faster. Ah, I'm still using 2.79 shortcuts. So let's see, um, let's just put an HDR in here. No, I don't want that. I'm gonna do that in a second. I'm still getting confused between the world and the, the shading tabs. So still getting used to stuff, but it's all right, it's fun. Actually, just do it with an area light. Um, and we'll bring this up a little bit. So as you can see, I'm working with cycles in the viewport and like just being able to select stuff is really, really awesome. The only thing they need to bring back is the shift F3 for the shader editor. That's something I do miss. Um, let's see, we'll throw this one out and throw in the new principal volume. Shader principal volume, where are you? There we go. Into the volume slot. And uh, I think there's a plane in here, which we'll hide just very briefly. And we'll select the area light and just crank it up. So the volume shading has become, I don't know, at least in my, in my opinion, has become a lot better and a lot faster. So even if we throw a texture in here, let's throw in the new Voronoi. So there's a new Voronoi, it got updated, which means it has the same options as the ones in the modifiers, which is really nice. Um, so let's just throw the color in here. You can see it does resolve a lot quicker than uh, it did before. It it the noise it gets noise free a lot quicker I find um, than what we were used to. So that's nice. It's always good when stuff gets faster. As you can see, it just improves. Uh, and yes, I am rendering on multiple GPUs. Obviously, it's fast because of that as well. But um, really, really nice. So that's definitely something I'm excited about. Um, Let's see, I'm still getting a lot of EV questions, so screw it, let's dive into EV a little bit and, uh, and talk about uh, some stuff that's really interesting. So I'll open uh, a file that I've been working on lately. It's not finished yet, but you can get an idea of what's going on. So um, I'm just gonna, so I can talk about all the different options. Um, with EV real quick and I'm gonna save this as a different file so I don't overwrite my work and mess it up. Um, there we go. So this is what this uh, project currently looks like. Um, it's still a work in progress. It's some stuff I'm gonna turn off these strands because it's a little bit faster so you get an idea of uh, something so this would be generally running on the other screen uh, when I'm doing stuff, which is really cool. Um, but let's get into some of the EV settings and how everything works. So if I were just to turn everything off that, let's see, I've tweaked. Do, 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 do. This is what it looks like. So this is the, actually, this is the exact same scene with uh, default EV settings. So there is definitely a lot of stuff that needs to be uh, needs to be tweaked. Um, so some of the first ones, uh, so sampling obviously is the same as EV. Um, and actually I'm gonna move my camera over here so we can see what we're doing. Um, there we go. Um, so this is the, the UI setup I've been talking about. So I get a lot of space here to work on things. So sampling, same as cycles, you know, more samples less noise, it's as simple as that. But you don't need as many of them, which is really nice. Uh, the viewport denoising is great. And I'll do a weird shit episode um, in the future as well where I go over everything. But just to talk a little bit about the stuff that, uh, that's interesting. Now ambient occlusion for this scene, because it's quite dark, you're not really gonna see a difference, um, especially at this stage when there's not much going on. But ambient occlusion, you know, same as in, similar as in cycles, it gives you a little bit more definition uh, of places where objects touch each other. It's cool. Then Bloom obviously is a lot of fun, uh, something that I would generally add in post. Now you can just add it straight to your render. And I found that I haven't been using the compositor all that much with EV, although you can still use it, which is really nice. Um, that I really, really like. Then Depth of Field, everybody loves Depth of Field. Um, the only thing that I found is I'm constantly going under a normal f-stop. So generally with cameras, you'll Barely never, you almost never go under one or 1.2. Um, but 
you know, I'm not really always working at the right scale or whatever, so I tend to go even lower. But if you go too low, then it gets super slow. So you can see it's already going, being a little bit slower than it was before. We can do cool stuff with it. Um, it's fun. And you know, who doesn't love a bit of, who doesn't love a little bit of depth of field, right? Then uh, subsurface scattering is awesome, but there's no subsurface scattering in this uh, project just yet. But the screen space reflections is where it's at. Um, there we go. This is a lot of the uh, scene. So this is not just reflections, but it's also refractions. Um, some of the things that I've noticed is by default, it's set to a very low quality. And you can see uh, stuff changing and I'd set the uh, trace precision up and turn off half res trace. And you'll see, because this is screen space, as I'm moving this around, you'll actually see the reflections change. And that has to do with the fact that it's only going to reflect, reflect what is within the screen, um, as the name suggests. So if I move up, all of this top stuff doesn't get rendered anymore, so it doesn't get reflected anymore. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And they're not even remotely as accurate as uh, cycles reflections. So it's going to take a little while to get used to the way it works. Um, but I found after a week or two just playing around with it, you can definitely uh, get some crazy, crazy stuff out of it, which is really nice. Um, then motion blur. Obviously, motion blur at these speeds is pretty sweet. So again, this is a, a 4K frame that I was test rendering. So. As you can see, my mouse is sort of jittering as it's rendering, but come on, you can do it. There we go. Uh, and you see it jump at the end. Uh, there's a little bit of compositor stuff in there as well. But again, I'm getting a 4K frame in 13 seconds with motion blur, depth of field, reflections, refractions, everything in it. Uh, and while they're, you know, game engine style, if you're moving really fast through stuff, you're not going to see the difference all that much. And for VJ loops and things, I think this is going to be an amazing tool for people that want to get into it. Um, so yeah, I mean, awesome, right? Motion blur really, really quickly. Uh, and just to give you an idea, um, I've set the samples up higher for a lot of this stuff. But um, let's say we bring the size down to something a bit more normal and uh, been using a lot of 60 frames per second as well just because it's that fast and we bring the uh, render samples down a little bit then oh wrong one if i render now um, a lot of it is actually synchronizing the thing and now i'm getting the same frame in 3.06 seconds so there you go and this is with compositing at the end so it's probably like two and a half seconds for the render or two seconds for the render um without setting up the scene so yeah Lots of fun being able to work like this and change parameters in real time. Um, so let's say, let's make this a little bit smaller and go into the shader editor. For me as well, like being able to work on a laptop now is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, as much as I enjoy building a crazy computer, uh, being able to work somewhere else or remotely uh, in a coffee shop or whatever is a very appealing idea. Um, so let's say I've got my shader here. It's just some uh, a PBR shader. I think I downloaded the textures from either Texture Haven or CC0 Textures, one or the other. Um, but you're able to just kind of change stuff in real time and you can see it sort of change. So now I change it into metallic. I can mess with the roughness. You can see everything change in real time. So now it's not very rough at all. Uh, there we go. Just messing with things. And I think this is really a big step, like a big leap forward. Even if you do initial sort of look dev in Eevee and then switch it over to Cycles, um, most of the stuff is shared. The only thing that isn't shared is the lighting, which is a little bit annoying because you have to tweak the lighting. Um, I think there's, they're wanting to change it to get them running the same way, but because of the way both engines are built, they're fundamentally different. So you're always going to be a little bit, uh, always going to get a little, yeah, I don't know, a little bit of difference, but still, it's kind of amazing to see how, how quickly it all reacts and works. I mean, this is with all the options enabled, so very cool, very nice. Um, something that you will notice, though, is that motion blur in the, uh, in the viewport doesn't converge just yet. I don't know if this is by design or um, 
it's still a bug. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's been like this since pretty much the beginning. Um, wouldn't surprise me if it's by design because it is a very heavy effect for rendering. Um, but still, you know, it's pretty cool. So let's see um, if there's any questions in the meantime. So the cycle is faster. But I found Blender to generally be slower. Really? Okay. I haven't noticed it that much. It seems pretty much as fast. Um, isn't Sphere Chalk or something like that a modal modeling system? It's an add-on. Yes, it, it has. And you know, you've got, um, what do you call it? Uh, I can't think of the name. Yeah, animation nodes. So between animation nodes and Sphere Chalk, a lot of the um, everything nodes functionality is sort of already the idea for it is there. Um, it can do some really cool stuff. I haven't used it all that much though myself. Uh, so let's see, is Eevee mainly for previewing or can it be used for renders? I think I've shown that it's uh, it's definitely possible to use it for renders, no problem. Um, then BMW benchmark, never mind. Yeah, BMW should work, but anyway. New fart modifier, yes, <laughs> yes. I put the word fart in the title, haha, <laughs> funny. Um, farts are hilarious though, just to be, just to be honest. But um, also disabling the world HDR background in EV is a lot more hacky than cycles where you can just take the camera off, you need to mess with the light paths and stuff. Yeah, um, but stuff like that is if you go to the dev talk forum, if you have feedback, um, I know it, it sometimes can seem like they're not really listening or whatever. Um, just give them feedback. Make posts, give them feedback. If other people feel the same way, it's going to get picked up. People will talk about it. It's incredibly important for them to know like, if there's stuff that really isn't working then or, or feels really weird to use, then it's good to know because they get feedback from the people in the studio, but the people in the studio might not be using parts of Blender as much that some other people are using. So I would definitely encourage you to post on the DevTalk forum, so devtalk.blender.org, and also um, very much so uh, if you have a bug and you can reproduce it, which is very, very you know, important, put in a bug report because uh, it is very helpful to them. It all gets added into uh, the stuff that they need to fix. So, let's see. Glass is weird and Eevee just looks like a metallic shader. Well, obviously, because it's a, a different type of rendering engine and it's real time. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Alt A, no. Something weird going on, so. Oh no, of course, it's not the overlays. My whole thing is orange, wow, smart. I was thinking it was the overlays, but it's just the. Anywho, never mind. Um, so yes, glass does look a little bit weird, but it's basically because it's also working in screen space. So it's just grabbing whatever's behind it and refracting it. It's not taking all the other calculations into account that Cycles is doing. Um, so I see a lot of posts from people that are like, oh, EV this and EV that, and why can't it do this? Why can't it do that? It's fundamentally different to Cycles. Cycles is a path tracer, which is trying to, you know, solve the physical, actual physical of equation of how light works, um, the way we perceive it and the way it works like physically in nature. And EV is basically a whole bunch of, I don't want to call them hacks because that's not what it is, but it's a whole bunch of techniques to try and get everything running as, as real time as possible. Um, so it's trying to, you know, it's faking a lot of the stuff that Cycles is doing for real. So I think it's unfair to judge it by like, hey, this doesn't look as good or whatever. You can't judge a, a real time engine and a path tracer next to each other. It just doesn't work that way. So there we go. But anyway, um, Let's get back to some other questions and then I'll get back to more EV stuff. So how to do the colored edges, uh, just a wireframe modifier with a separate material. So if you select the object, um, I can turn off the wireframe. So this is just what it looks like. Actually, it looks really cool. Hmm, I might change it. Um, and if I turn it on, it's just the wireframe and you can put in either the same material or a different one. So material offset one means it, this is the base material and then it's just gonna use this glowing emission material instead. Um, there we go. So 
more questions. Let's see. How do you get good with Blender, specifically visual effects and the nodes? You just muck around, or do you have to take courses and gain experiences in 3D software and programming? Well, I've been doing 3D, God knows how long, professionally for about eight or nine years at this point, I think. And I've been messing with it since I was a teenager. Uh, very on and off though, not, not full time at all. I only really got serious about it about 10 years ago. Um, you just keep experimenting. Um, you know, you get better through sucking basically and trying things. And, you know, the, a great way to look uh, to get better is just to kind of look at the stuff that you like and try to deconstruct it and see how some of the other people do it and, uh, and go from there. So, um, but just keep at it, keep at it. I mean, I have a lot of really old 3D stuff, which is horrible, uh, which some of it is still online. I don't know if I showed it last time. Um, but yeah, it's just what it is. You got to keep at it. I know it's a very boring answer, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, Glasses worked well for EV. Did you zero the roughness and max the transmission on the principal shader? Yeah, basically, it's just principled. Uh, Finn asks, how are you doing? Great, Finn, how are you doing? <laughs> Hope you're well. Um, Fun you learn a lot from, yeah, tutorials on YouTube, practicing, definitely. And um, a great way to get really quick at using stuff, I found, is uh, no matter what your skill level is, keep watching beginner tutorials. Because everybody has that one shortcut or that one trick they want to show you to work quickly. And uh, I found if you watch a lot of them, you get a lot of really great tricks uh, very quickly, which is nice. So what does that same scene look like in cycles? And that's a good question. It's very slow, uh, I believe. So let's just switch it over and see what happens. Um, it might not even work. There we go. It's incredibly slow because this for cycles is like worst case scenario, right? It's nothing but mesh lights, which is just horrible to begin with. Um, you get a lot of noise uh, still from them. Um, and it's all enclosed spaces with no like proper direct lights. So it's really hard thing to, to actually do. Um, let's see, these are with default settings though. I would usually crank them up just a little bit, but still uh, ooh, sampling. So let run in the background. So this is what it looks like in cycles. So similar, um, but you know, I made the scene in Eevee, so it's gonna look a little bit better in Eevee, but still interesting that it does what it does. Um, let's see. I personally don't like having hit Alt-8, unselect all. Pfft, I don't know, um, I've moaned about little things here and there, but honestly, after a week or two, you get used to it, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> I've I've even had it now where I'm going back to 2.79 and trying to use 2.8 shortcuts and realizing like oh right doesn't work. So honestly, people complain a lot, but at the end of the day, if you just use it for a little while, it's not too bad. So do the emissive edges emit light or just put light somewhere else? It's just uh, an emission shader, so they do actually emit light, and that's why uh, why it's going on. Now with EV, everything that you see here, it's all just reflections. There's no lighting actually going on in the scene. When you think about it with EV, there's no actual lighting in the scene, it's just reflections. Um, and yes, these are objects that emit light technically, but they don't actually emit light because of the way EV works, so. Cool. Did I teach myself Blender or did I take a course? Um, I taught, it, taught myself for the most part, but I came from other 3D applications before, so a lot of that knowledge transferred over. But I mean, a lot of YouTube stuff, some stuff on the Blender Cloud. Um, yeah, different places. So. so there we go. Anyway, all right, so let's keep going. So another thing um, that I really, really like about EV is real-time volumetrics. Now, there are volumetrics in the sense that it's volume rendering, but um, compared to something like cycles, they're not actually bouncing the light around in the volumes. But you can do some really fun stuff with it. Now I can't remember, I, the files are on my backup drive, so I can't get to them easily. I should have actually copied them over. Um, but let's start with a new scene very quickly and just go from there. So I'm just gonna create a cube and I'm gonna put in some volume stuff. So let's set it to rendered here. I don't know why I'm in edit mode, there we go. 
and I'm gonna set my let's see there I go again world to black and set this to be an area light and I'm just gonna move it up to the top and make it fairly big so we just have some lights shining through so volumetrics everybody's favorites um, or at least mine so there we go let's add a new shader to our cube or throw this out and add in the principled uh, yeah principal volume where are we So initially, this isn't really going to do anything, obviously, because we need to set up our um, EV stuff. So I'm just going to turn on volumetric, and here we get it. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is it's sort of blocky. And uh, to get this to render a bit more detail, you can bring down the tile size, even though I've noticed setting it down to 2, that's when everything gets really, really slow. We'll try it like this for now, and we'll turn on the shadows as well. Um, this is really crazy stuff, and you can get very very into it. Um, so let's try, actually let's do a wave texture. See if we can get anything out of it. So you obviously can change the color, but I'm gonna stick this in the density and set it to object coordinates. And now we can actually just scale it down. Come on. There we go. So now we're actually getting those, that wavy texture. If I add in distortion, we'll see, we'll get it really nicely. And it works with all the stuff that you're used to as well, which is great. So I can put a color ramp in here and come on, set it to be spline. And now we can actually really tweak it. So we get these really fancy looking volumetrics, but you know, this is fun. We can even pipe the color in here as well and color that too. So let's see. Let's change it to something funky. Let's do red and yellow. You can see this gets very interesting very quickly. If we up the detail, um, there we go. Now another fun thing that you can do is actually add in even more. Uh, so just with an add shader. And this goes back to some stuff that I posted a while back uh, where I was first sort of messing around with the volumes in EV. And let's add in an emission shader. So it can also do emissive volumes, um, which obviously because we're just doing the whole thing is going to look a little bit weird. But if we add in another color ramp, then we might actually be able to get an interesting effect where we can ramp this all the way to the edge. And it does get a little bit dicey. But now we get these really cool looking sort of edges and then a bleed, a color bleed out from there. Um, and actually I should put this in the strength, not the color. And then I could even bring it just down a little bit, by controlling it. Let's duplicate this just to get the color in. So you do something like this. And actually let's bring this back up. There we go. And you can get these really fancy looking uh, effects very quickly. I mean, this stuff I could just play with for hours. Just looking at it, it's hypnotizing, and it's all animatable. So you can just rotate it around, you know, make it bigger, smaller, scale it, move it around. So you can do some really cool stuff. Um, I don't know, for the people that haven't seen it yet, I'll see if I can find them on my Instagram really quickly. So these ones we made using that technique exactly. And then I was adding extra stuff in to distort them and things. So it's very, very cool um, what you can do with them. You do make a lot of really fun stuff. So, But yeah, it's easy to set up. Um, we can change this to cycles, but I don't know how well it will translate. Oh, it actually does, there we go. 
Obviously, the uh, level of detail in cycles is always going to be a little bit better. And let's set it to GPU so it's a bit faster. There we go. But then again, you know, this is this is pretty rad stuff. So, and with the principal volume and the work they've done in the background, it's definitely gotten a lot faster. I mean, just looking at how quickly this resolves is is just awesome. Um, the only thing that doesn't work with EV yet is having custom like proper custom shapes it just grabs the bounding box so even if i were to let's say subdivide this cube so where in uh in cycles you can see i've just subdivided it very simply or in cycles it actually respects it if we go back over to ev it's just going to grab the bounding box of it so it doesn't support that yet so there you go um let's see But yeah, um, what else? Yes, the color management is now in the render settings, which I think is a good improvement because um, you can just use it with EV and cycles as well. So you can even use all the old film ones, which is fun. Like you can get some very interesting results. Um, this is really cool. It allows for a lot of experimentation. And you see the way it sort of builds up. Um, obviously, the more samples we're going to put in here, the longer it's going to take to resolve, but the better it's actually going to look in the end. So this is how um, it can look even with EV, and then we could cycle through a lot of the uh, a lot of the old stuff in there as well. And yeah, technically the color management isn't perfect, and it's does, doing a lot of weird things behind the scenes. But you know, sometimes you just need a look, and you can scroll through them very quickly and try different things out, which is a lot of fun. We change the color a little bit. So yeah, I could play with this stuff all day. I think it's pretty uh, <laughs> pretty apparent at this point. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, other than that, I don't know. Yeah, so this stuff, the, um, the indirect lighting and other things, I don't know if I'll be able to set up a scene quickly to show you how it works, but maybe we will. Um, this is where it gets, you know, very game engine -y compared to cycles, where with cycles you can just do whatever you want. Let's see. something in here, maybe put a light in here. And then I'm gonna color these in different things. I'm making sort of like a Cornell box very, very quickly. Um, this is material on it. I need a new material for that one and a new material for that one. There we go, I'm gonna make this one red and the other one green. Classic sort of setup. There you go. And I haven't used this stuff much myself yet, so um, if I don't get it to work, it's probably because I'm doing something wrong. Uh, there we go. See, this is what I was talking about. Uh, RX, no, RX 90. Let's move this up. Turn it around a little bit. There we go. X axis, something like that. Anyway, that's good enough for now. Let's just set it to render. EV, there we go. And turn, maybe turn off the uh, world. So I don't know how well this example is going to work, but we'll see. We'll see if I can get it to work uh, properly. So this is just a very simple idea. Uh, smooth shade her. And um, basically what we don't have right now is uh, the same thing that you would get in cycles where the green photons or you know the green stuff would bounce over onto the white and um, it's really not doing all that much so i'll talk about the irradiance volumes first so this irradiance volume basically what it's going to do is it's meant to work for um, static setups so the same way you would bake global illumination in unreal engine or unity or other engines um, if you're baking it, then uh, the same thing you'll have to do here in, uh, in Blender as well. So here we go. Let's just bake that entire thing. And now, if it's correct, if I'm doing it right, like I said, I haven't used it much. Bake indirect lighting, there we go. Now what it's actually done is it has, it's grabbed a static um, bake of the lighting. So now we're actually getting proper green from here 
and a little bit of red from here. Um, so you actually see that's what's happening. Now if I were to move this stuff around, it's got limited use because you can see the bake sort of uh, depends on what's in there and what isn't. If I turn off the overlays even, you can see there's some green here, there's some green here. And that's what it's all about, is for getting sort of like some global illumination in the scene, but it's meant for static objects as far as I can tell. Um, like I said, very limited use myself. But it's important to know that once you start moving stuff around, it's actually not gonna work for it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So simple, um, there's a lot of stuff you can tweak. I'm not gonna get into it right now but um that's what that's about then for the reflections um let's see if i make suzanne a let's make her metallic and turn down the roughness because it'll be the best way to show it now the screen space reflections are pretty decent and they're real time which is really nice I don't know how much of an impact this will have, but if we add a reflection cube map in here and just increase the size a little bit so it grabs everything, um, then normally if we bake, we're gonna get even better reflections. There we go. So this again is meant for more static stuff and it's, it works in combination. Uh, let's see, if we turn off the screen space reflections, you'll actually see what the cube map is doing. So what it's doing is it's grabbing this point here and it's kind of, it's not the correct way of explaining it, but it's the easiest way to do so. What it's kind of doing is rendering sort of a, an HDR and using that uh, of the point it's at and then using that for reflections on the, uh, on the objects. Again, meant for static objects. So I haven't used this all that much in some of the scenes I've done. I've mainly just used the screen space reflections. But if you have a very complex scene with a lot of stuff going on, you definitely want to use those um, for a lot of the static objects that are in there to get more reflections in the scene and have it look a little bit cooler. Now, same thing here as well with the reflection plane. Um, what that mainly is meant for is stuff, let's see, it's in here, stuff like mirrors. Basically, it's just a mirror, um, but it gives you a bit more distance and other things to do. And uh, you can scale it up and down and scale it like this. And there you go, now you actually have a mirror. So it's quite hard to do, and there's a lot of um, a lot of trickery going on in the engine to make it work the way it does. So uh, turn on, what is it? Screen space reflections as well. And we get a more complete looking thing. So there you go, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, again, stuff that you you can do a lot of really simple stuff very quickly in Eevee, where it may take a little bit longer in cycles to actually get there. Um, and then for like really detailed scenes, you're gonna have to do some of this baking and other things in uh, in Eevee, while Cycles does that automatically. So it's a trade-off, but it's cool to have options in both in both engines, obviously. So let's real quickly. Um, So that's what I've been thinking. Thank you for the answer. You're a huge inspiration. Thank you very much. Um, I hope uh, <laughs> I hope today is a bit interesting. I know this is a bit you know random, but um, I was hoping to to make it somewhat interesting. Um, which Blender channels on YouTube do you recommend for all those? Uh, expect except all the big ones. Yeah. So if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, let's see here some of the stuff. I think, I don't know if I answered this last time, I think I might have done. Um, so this guy for sure, yes, I definitely recommended him last time as well. Hey, damn it, YouTube, just work. There we go. He does a lot of like very technical stuff, but it's, I find that very interesting. Um, there's a, another couple of ones, I don't know. Um, so Albin's cool, Alessandro's cool, I'm gonna go over them. Um, a lot of the Blender, they have actually a lot of different channels. I really like those. Then Captain Disillusion, it's just fun to watch, um, but knowing that it's all done in Blender is always nice. CG Master is good. Cinecat Pro is good. Um, let's see. Random stuff. Then Chalk stuff, he's at the Blender Institute right now, so it's cool to see some updates here and there from him. Um, him I showed. Yeah, these guys do cool stuff as well. Um, 
think that's it. Oh yeah, these two are good too. So um, Alban, he's doing a lot of EV stuff as well lately, but he does a lot of visual effects and things. So I would definitely recommend him uh, to have a look at. Then Alessandro Zamparelli, he, uh, he doesn't have all that many subscribers, but he has a lot of really, he's the guy that created the tissue add-on. Um, and he does a lot of really interesting sort of ideas in Blender and sort of uh, cool, let's see if we can skip through here, cool uh, patterns and other things, um, which is a lot of fun to watch. And yeah, Captain Disillusion, uh, his, uh, his Blender talk is on the front page there as well. TG Masters, most people know them, um, but they, they're cool too. And obviously Gleb and Andy and, and a lot of the, the bigger ones are very, very good too. Then uh, this guy has been a while since he posted, but he still had um, he had some interesting stuff. Like for example, the group instances, um, he has a really great explanation of how it works and they're now called collection instances. But um, he's one of the people that put me onto those. Uh, and he has a lot of theory stuff and shading stuff in there, which is fun. So uh, yeah, then Jock, he's at the Blender Institute. So he's working on different things. Uh, he gets updated. Then Zakarias, he mainly does a lot of sculpting. Um, he's got some interesting things and uh, this guy, I don't know how many people have heard of him, but he does a lot of cool stuff, um, similar, sort of in a similar vein of what I do. And he loses a lot of animation nodes. So if you want to get into it, like this is a really interesting one, how to spawn rigid bodies. So it's something you can not actually do properly with the particle system, but you can do it with uh, animation nodes. And he goes through the whole thing. So interesting stuff. So those are the, some of the channels that I would recommend uh, as well. So. Um, Blender channel on YouTube. Oh, yeah. So Cyclist definitely hates dark scenes. The amount of shit you have to go through to reduce fireflies. Yes, but it's definitely gotten a lot better, and the defaults are a lot better as well in uh, in two point eight. So you should see quite a bit of improvement. Um, should do some for futuristic city with the Voronoi texture. Yeah, I've been wanting to do a city thing for a long time. I actually have a good plugin for it as well, but I want to like maybe get into modeling and, and model some skyscrapers and some some stuff. Um, but yeah, do this modeling. Um, so, uh, so other people uh, did some stuff. Yes, uh, Penfinity, Wesley, he was in the chat earlier. I don't know if he's still here. Great channel as well, cool stuff. Um, there's so many though at this point. There's so many great things. Um, oh, Heavy Polly's streaming as well. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Maybe I should uh, chat with him and see if we don't overlap next time. Um, we go volume setup looks kind of amazing setup for space scenes like Stardust. Yeah, yeah, you can do some cool stuff. And um, if you want to augment that as well, there's some. Unfortunately, you do need a Blender Cloud subscription, but if you if you have the money to give it a go, um, a lot of the content on it, you're free to actually download. So even if you want to only look for, pay for a couple of months and look through it and download the good stuff, you can do that as well. I'm not logged in at the moment, but there's a video from uh, the Spring team, uh, from Andy, who's working on uh, the movie, uh, about how they did clouds, and he goes into volumetric stuff as well. Um, yeah, great stuff, so. Oh, he's still here. Great. No, happy to happy to plug you, man. You, you do some cool stuff as well. So <laughs> you're done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Funny. All right. Um, so then would you say the screen space reflection is a good alternative for the basic stuff? Yes. Um, let's say uh, if I can find something interesting. So if we go to Instagram and we just look for actually maybe we'll look through my stream and we can find like this could probably be done ish in EV maybe something like this could be done as well um, this is all refraction so that's gonna be cycles uh, but you get like the the very typical uh, designy type stuff let's see if I could just do motion design uh, motion designers yeah, like this, for example, this is all reflections. You can get really close with EV for something like this. Um, so a lot of the ones like these that I see, um, you could do a lot of this stuff in EV and, and 
most people wouldn't even notice, I think. So for sure, there's a big use case for one or the other. So um, yeah. <laughs> nice. Somebody loves my farts. <laughs> um, so that's that. I don't know if there's all that much I can get into for now. Um, let's see. Yeah, so if I go to a new one, I've talked mostly about some of this stuff. Um, yeah, maybe this is a good time. If there's any like final questions or you want me to show anything or a recent project or something like that, um, if it's in 2.8, I'll, I'll happily open it up and show you. Um, I mean, if it's 2.792, but just uh, might be better if we keep it on topic. Um, other than that, I don't know if there's that much um, I need to say. I'm definitely going to do a weird shit episode, a new rendering one with uh, some updates on cycles and, and just diving into Eevee completely. Um, then I don't know what else. Um, I'm just waiting for a couple of things to get fixed um, so, so it works well. Um, other than that, I don't know. I think that might be it. This might be a short one. It's still an hour and 15 minutes, but it might actually be a short one this time around. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, Eevee stuff. No, I think we're actually pretty good to go. So I think I'm going to wrap it up this one. Um, yeah. Now that the 2.8 beta is here, I'm going to start. I'm going to try and do some more stuff again and get back to some tutorials. I won't stop the streams. But um, definitely do some do some tutorials and things. Uh, which program do you write sound for videos? Uh, oh, so yeah, I do a lot of my own music. Um, I use Bitwig. It's not installed. It's on my other computer. Um, and it's the only Windows machine. I think this gets asked a lot, but I use this for music most of the time. Um, it runs on Linux as well, which is one of the reasons I, I liked it. But um, yeah, it's good. I like it. It works. Um, but there's a lot of there's some free alternative on Linux as well. So there's LMMS, which is quite old. I don't know how much that gets updated still. There's uh, Ardor, which is really cool um, and gets updated a lot. Uh, and from I haven't used it much, but I hear good things from other people. So so sorry. And then let's see other loops if you have them in two point eight. Um, not yet. Outside of the three I showed you, I haven't done any full loops in 2.8 yet. So uh, uh, I'm going to go up to, I think, 70 or so. Um, so another couple in EV before I switch it up again, because um, I usually get sick of things after a little while. Um, any grease pencil stuff I've experimented with? No. But if there's a reason for me to even start considering, uh, considering learning how to draw then this is it but i am world's worst uh 2d artist so we'll see but the fact that they have their own modifier system and you can do some interesting stuff with them and fx i think it might be fun to get into it at some point but i don't know if i will so we'll see um let's see Thank you very much for sharing your work. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, I appreciate all the, the support I get from everyone. Um, otherwise, I don't think I'd still be doing this stuff, if I'm honest. So, you know if there's a plan to fix the bounding box volumes? I'm sure they'll fix them in time. Um, the thing is, uh, a lot of people uh, seem to be expecting quite a lot, especially from EV. Like, this is a 1.0 1, 1 release for, for EV, I mean, like the amount of stuff that we're getting in the first first release is kind of amazing. Um, I found it to be, it was quite stable lately, um, which is really nice. And honestly, it's just another tool in the toolbox. So very cool. Um, yeah. So thanks to everybody that's saying thanks. I'm not going to repeat all of them. Um, hi, Jacob. <laughs> Good to see you again. Um, Somebody says FL Studio. Yeah, FL Studio is cool if, if you're on Windows. I was mainly talking about the Linux ones. Um, 
Is all my gear named after Tron? Yes, all the computers in my house are named after characters from Tron Legacy. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Is Bitwig still alive? Yeah, very much so. They update it frequently and they seem to have a lot of, a lot of people using it. So it's a good thing. Um, doesn't, no indication that it's going away any soon. How's my left clicking? I'm still right clicking for now. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking for tutorials that I might, might switch. Um, but we'll see. I think Eevee is going to be a lot of fun for, because uh, somebody's mentioning stuff. But yeah, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with Eevee for things like UIs. Um, I think a, a lot of people that are now using After Effects might be interested in uh, looking looking towards Eevee. Um, that's one of the applications I've missed the most, I guess, switching to Linux and to, to open source stuff. But there's a lot of potential there. Um, oh, and I'll give you one last EV trick, uh, which I found out very recently myself. Um, it's just very simple. But it's kind of hidden, and you got to figure out where it is. Uh, but just for people wanting to try stuff, uh, let's say I have a texture, gradient texture, and an asset object so all I want from this very quickly just to show you how to do it because um, I'm sure a lot of people are have tried to find it and I found it right while reading through the change log so um, radial is it radial no it's sphere and then I'm just gonna put in a color ramp I'll do it like this what am I doing wrong is it generated It was working earlier. Spherical. Ah, oh, there we are. Um, let's see. So let's say this is your um, your material, but you want to actually have a transparent. Uh, you want that use that white thing for transparency, and we just want to have the red shader coming through. So this is something I was looking for for ages, and I didn't. I thought it didn't actually work in Eevee, but I was just being thick, and I didn't find it. So let's put in the mix shader. I'm gonna use this as the mix, and I'm gonna mix in a transparent. And actually we want it the other way around. We want it to be transparent and then mix in the thing. So by default, it doesn't actually seem to work. So to actually get this to work and to enable this, you have to go into the settings. And similar to the way you have to turn on refraction in the material settings, you have to actually turn on the alpha hashed option in here, and then it's gonna work. And you can even get um, shadows as well. Now, if you have multiple layers of, uh, of transparent things with uh, a bunch of shadows enabled, then it might get a little funky, but that's the way to enable it. And it's a very simple thing, but it took me a while to figure out, so I figured I'd share it really quickly. But now you can actually get uh, stuff. So imagine having to build UIs and other things and wanting to animate textures uh, for UI type stuff. It's uh, kind of a godsend that it's in there and now it's all real time. So you can go super, super, super quick, which is awesome. Um, cool. All right, so let's see. Uh, Institute is hiding functions from us now. No, but there, I believe there was a note with it. I can't remember if there was uh, more features. Let's go back. EV. So this is where I ended up finding it. I'm sure there's a better place to actually find it. But screen space effects limitations transparency. So EV treats transparent objects super different in cycles. They're sorted front to back per object and not perceive any screen space effects. It's fast and works fine. There's only approximate. So um, for more accurate results, the hashed alpha is the best one to use. And that's why uh, it says it. And um, you might have to up the samples a little bit to give accurate transparency, but it works. It's cool. So you can do a lot of very interesting things. There we go. Um, and I think I missed one last question. I confused between mental ray and mental flow. I heard mental flow is going to be big for fluid simulations. Yep, yeah, it's cool. Um, definitely, I've used it uh, on other stuff for some stills. 
I used an experimental build that I built myself uh, a while back and it's fun but it's received a lot of updates since so it's gonna be cool to have uh, an update for the fluid sim but I think they're only gonna integrate it in 2.81 so a little bit a little bit longer that's it all right um, keep it real and all that stuff uh, thank you all for joining and um, yeah thanks again uh, and uh, I'll see you next time so make cool stuff and share it with everybody and if you have questions you know where to find me all right